Hey, what's up, guys? So I wanted to do a quick video, not going to talk too long about this, but I've had so many of you ask me about this Deontay Wilder step aside money so we could get Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury in the ring this year. And uh, you guys have asked me on Facebook, on Twitter, all over the place, Instagram, YouTube. So I just wanted to put a quick video together just to address this stuff, okay? Uh, in, in one respect, I would say, Never say never in boxing. Anything's possible. So I want to preface that because, you know, I've been wrong a million times. I'll be wrong again. It will happen. But there's the exception to the rule and then there's the rule. So the rule here is what I'm going to go with, okay? Guys, I understand a lot of people are, are craving boxing content right now and thinking, I think some people are thinking positively that, well, this promoter said this and that promoter said that. They're talking about coming back with these really strong fight cards and all that. And, you know, maybe because uh, promoters haven't made a lot of money this year, fighters haven't laid, made a lot of money this year, they're going to just kind of cancel the plan that they had set up and they're going to go right to the good fights. No setup fights, no, no you know, building kind of fights, no brand building type of matchups. We're going to go right to the good stuff. Guys, it's not going to happen. Boxing business is going to go forward. Boxing business, uh, you know, as it's always been done. Yes, there will be some differences now because of COVID-19. There's going to be some updates to the way uh, commissions handle fights and, and everything like that. It's going to take a while for us to get back to f big fights, especially in Vegas, in the casinos, where you could do a big gate. And that's going to be that's more important to some fighters than others. We're going to come back with club shows. That's what you're going to get next month and in July. We've been over this, okay? That's what's going to happen. As it relates to Deontay Wilder and his current situation with Tyson Fury, look, when they think back to when their first fight was, I want to say that was it was the end of 2018, if I remember correctly, it was December 2018. It took a very long time for them to negotiate the rematch because there were so many moving parts and so many players involved. And when the rematch was signed, there was a rematch clause to it, right? So all of that is contractually mandated. It's in the contract, okay? Think about it from this perspective. With Tyson Fury, um, it's not like he has one promoter. It's not like with this situation there's one promoter or one network. Fury's on ESPN here in the States, of course, uh, represented by Top Rank here, but he's still he's he's also represented by MTK uh, Global, uh, Frank Warren. He has a lot of different people involved in his management, and it's the same thing with Deontay Wilder. He has a bunch of people involved in his management, and he fights on Fox slash Showtime at PBC, and he has different people in his management than Fury does. So, this is. Just for those two guys to fight and to get a contract locked down, you had networks coming together, you had different promoters, different managers, different publicists, all these people all coming together to get that contract done. Now, on the Anthony Joshua side, he fights on the zone, he's with Eddie Hearn, and he has a mandatory right now, a mandatory situation. Actually, he had a mandatory. Uh, he has mandatory with two different belts. He's going to end up having to drop one. So the only reason that hasn't happened yet, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, my brain's a little foggy right now. But I, he hasn't dumped that WBO yet. The only reason that hasn't happened yet is because we're on lockdown. Everything's been postponed, or else he would have already dumped it. But he's got mandatories to take care of and everything else. So for for Deontay Wilder to accept step-aside money, not only would he have to accept that, and his pride's on the line. He wants to fight Fury again and, and avenge that loss, okay? But all his people that have been along for the ride and have put up a, a massive investment in him and got a pretty good payoff in that second fight with Fury, they want the even bigger payoff in the third fight because their hope is, is that they can build that third fight up to do at least similar numbers to the second fight, but perhaps even bigger numbers, depending on how it's marketed. If you look at that rematch, you know, I remember going into that rematch that took place this February. I remember saying, man, this is the best, most well-promoted boxing event that we have seen in a long time. The amount of money and, and just work that both fighters put in 
and their management and both networks. It was amazing. But all that shit costs money. And time is money as well. Okay, I'm not just talking about paper money. I'm talking about time and money. That investment. Man, both sides want that payoff. They want that third fight. And it's in a contract. So for Wilder to take step aside money, not only would he have to swallow his pride a little bit, and he wants to get right back in that ring with Fury and avenge his loss, much like AJ did with Andy Ruiz, he wants to get in there and at least make that attempt. But his people and all of Tyson Fury's people and all the network executives and all the investors on the back end, guys, they want the return on their investment. They want that third fight. What is a couple million in step-aside money to wait when you've, are, you've got a contract, number one, you'd have to sign a whole new deal. Think of how difficult it was just to sign the deal for the rematch. You'd have to go through that process again, and then people would have to wait, and you might not get that return on investment. So it, it just it isn't likely when you start thinking of it that way. But then if you think about on the other side with, um, with Anthony Joshua, he's got mandatories. Is the, is the IBF going to be cool with this? Is the WBO going to be cool with this? How is the zone going to be involved? You already have you know, ESPN and Fox working together. Now you got to get a third network involved with the zone. Uh, how about you know Eddie Hearn and Matchroom? How do they come into play all this? Guys, there's so many moving parts. This sort of thing doesn't get cleaned up and worked out in a series of a couple months. We've been on lockdown for two months. How many months did it take to negotiate the deal, again, between Wilder and Fury and their rematch. You think within a couple weeks that they're just going to negotiate some step-aside money and go forward with this fight between AJ and Fury? And here's another thing. I don't know about you guys, but I've noticed a pattern in, in recent years when these big, big fights are finally put together. I'm not talking about May Pack. That was previous generation. That was the last, I won't say the last money grab, but the last of that sort of money grab, okay? take the money and run type of scenario. New generation, when these deals come together, it's generally speaking a two or three fight deal. Look at Canelo and Golovkin. It's the same thing with Wilder Fury. And it's going to be the same thing with the winner between a third fight between uh, Fury and Wilder when they eventually fight Anthony Joshua. That is not going to be a one-off. That is going to be a, uh, there's going to be a rematch clause there. You may very well get a three fight series out of if it ends up being Fury, let's just go with Fury Joshua. There's going to be a three-fight series there. It's going to be a heavyweight version of Canelo Golovkin. I've been saying this consistently now for a few years. This isn't nothing new. I'm not pulling this out of my ass. Just look at the way boxing business is done. I'm not saying I like it, but that's the way boxing business is done. So you guys have seen some certain Twitter profiles and, and Facebook, uh, yeah, Facebook things uh, posts. YouTube posts, all this stuff, saying uh, it's official. Deontay Wilder has accepted the step-aside money. And you, you forward it to me or you forward it to one of my colleagues or whatever, and you say, is this true? Guys, it's, you know, I understand why you're asking the question. But just think about it a little bit further. Think about every major fight that's been announced over the last few years. 99% of the time, the fighters themselves and or their management do the announcing. If you look at Deontay Wilder's Twitter, I don't think he's tweeted since February, maybe March. If you look at Anthony Joshua's Twitter, no mention of this. Tyson Fury, Eddie Hearn, everybody that would be involved in this situation, none of them have, have posted about it on their Twitter, their Instagram, their social media. None of them. You've seen a couple of, uh, unfortunately, a couple of reputable boxing sites have posted rumors and stuff, or maybe Bob Arum said XYZ, in, in a, an interview, and they'll take that as a source and put out an article. But promoters say shit in conversations all the time. And depending on how you formulate a question, you get a certain answer from a person. You can make it look like they're saying something they're really not. If a promoter says, you know, we'd, ex we'd explore taking step-aside money, to, you know, or if we could get, let's say Bob Arum says, you know, if Deontay Wilder accepted step-aside money, yeah, sure, we'd look at a fight with Anthony Joshua. That's just him talking. That's, that's not a contract. That's not official. There's nothing to that. But people will take that to write an article about it because they want to get clicks. People will take that and do a YouTube video or a tweet or whatever it is. And I, I'm not even saying Bob Arum said that. He said, he said something to that effect. And a couple people have said things like that. But it's all hypotheticals. 
There's nothing to it. Think about it logically. Look at the fighters, the promoters, their social media. Look at what they've tweeted or what they have not tweeted. And look at what's official versus rumors, okay? And then just think about boxing business 101. I hate to say it, guys, but there is a certain, you know, every platform, every network, every promoter, every fighter, every team had a certain plan for the first half of this year mainly centered around Cinco de Mayo and that busy spring schedule that boxing usually has. There's like the first half of the year, then the second half. And for a lot of people, it's, you know, a developmental brand building kind of fight during the first part of the year. Then you get the bigger fight the second half of the year or vice versa. And it's not as if because of the lockdown and the delays and all that, that they're just going to say, ah, well, screw all that. We're going to go forward now with what we had for the second half of the year. We're going to just jump right into that. That's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to happen. They're going to go forward with the plan they already had. Now, some plans, of course, will be altered, okay? There's, again, exceptions in the rule, okay? But generally speaking, plans are going to go forward like they had before. And, you know, mandatory situations are still going to uh, exist, uh, maybe there's going to be deadlines extended and things like that because of the lockdown. But all the stuff that you were going to get at the first half, half of the year is probably going to happen in the second half of the year. And certain plans for some fighters are going to get pushed all the way to 2021. Don't be surprised if you don't get the Fury Wilder rematch until early next year. It could happen. It's possible it could happen at the very end of this year. We just don't know because we don't know what's going to happen in Vegas uh, with the casinos there and everything else with, you know, are we still going to be social distancing in October, November, or could we pack the MGM Grand or something like that? And then even if we could, are the promoters going to feel comfortable enough and confident enough that they could get 15,000 people to buy tickets to fill the MGM Grand or 20,000 to fill the T-Mobile Arena? Are they confident people are going to feel confident enough to go to a sporting event like that, you know, with tens of thousands of people? this year. They might not feel confident in that, and they might want to delay it till next year. So people, stop buying into the clickbait, the rumors. This is something I talk about on my channel all the time. I talk about this on my show constantly. So much of media these days is click-driven. It's agenda-driven. It's revenue-driven. Every time you click on these people's Twitter, every time you click on their story, every time you click on their YouTube channel, whatever, or tweet it out and tag me or whoever else in the in the fight media asking, hey, is this legit or not? You may not realize it, but you're helping promote that rumor. You're helping promote that clickbait and you're helping that person make money. Stop doing it. Do the extra 60 seconds of research and just look at that tweet and look at the source. Look at how, uh, you know, where are they getting this information from? I saw a tweet from a particular Twitter account a couple of you uh, copied me on, and it said, per MTK Global, and they said that Deontay Wilder had accepted the step-aside money. Well, if you go to MTK Global's site and their social media accounts, there's zero mention of it. That's all you have to do to know that that tweet is complete bullshit. But that tweet has thousands of retweets and likes. And it's copied all over the place. And it, there are people writing stories based off that tweet. There's zero truth to it. So that's the kind of stuff, unfortunately, that's the age we live in on social media, in the modern media. It's not just in boxing. It's all media, all forms of media. More than half of it, I'd say, is complete bullshit, particularly during the lockdown where people are desperate for clicks because there's no news to report. So just be careful of that stuff. Be wary of it. And always consider the source, okay? What you're likely going to get, guys, is Fury and Wilder fighting a third time. You're going to get Anthony Joshua fighting Kubrat Pulev. And then maybe, just maybe, the winners of those two fights will fight at the end of next year. That's probably the best case scenario. All right, I'll see you at the fights.